Hello, and welcome to this week's devlog for my procedurally generated voxel-based RPG game. The first alpha release is approaching, and I spent most of my time this week getting the game to work on different platforms. I'm using my own engine for this project, and as I haven't really shipped a project with it before, that meant that a lot of these distribution specific things actually still had to be figured out. But this led to a deluge of things I have never really had to deal with before, so I had to figure much of this stuff out as I went. And I started by getting my build stabilised on Linux, because that's a platform I actually like. Most of the work for the Linux build had actually been done over Christmas, so really I was partly on my way anyway. For whatever reason, the game began to introduce a bunch of weird lags, the most notable ones being when you went to try and collect DXP orbs. The frame rate would drop to something about 10 frames a second, which is very surprising. All things considered though, we're here to make a portable version of the game not just one that ran on my own computers. So I began looking into Linux Deploy, which was a tool that allowed me to build an app image, something which I had already partly set up before. After a few hours of fiddling with badly linked shared libraries, I'd managed to get it working as a standalone Linux executable. I experimented with packaging the game's assets into this bundle, and suddenly I had a portable executable for my game, all dependencies included as well. And it was only 18 megabytes. So while Linux isn't going to be that popular with the player base, this was still really useful for me as I do tend to use it for my own development. And also it means the game will work on the Steam Deck. And we all love the Steam Deck. I love you. Now before I moved over to Windows, there was still something I had to do. Three years ago, I had a discussion with the developer of the GUI library that I used for this project about how to include animated text in games. We concluded that we needed a CMake flag to enable some performance losses in the library in exchange for more control over the placement of the characters. However, for whatever reason, this had been broken for quite a long time. I found that out quite a long time ago and just ignored it because I wasn't actually using that feature. I didn't really want to look at it, so that meant that I just added a patch to my engine which circumvented the feature entirely, but that also meant that off-the-shelf builds of the engine without the patch in would just fail miserably. Previously that didn't really matter because it was only me that was actually aware that this project even existed. But now other people are kind of aware of it because of this online presence, so I need to fix it. The thing is, after an hour or so of investigation, I concluded I hadn't actually broken it. It had in fact been broken by someone doing a formatting change, which got included in a completely unrelated commit. So that was fun. Do you know, honestly I'm just glad I found the issue, and I eventually did a pull request. With that, my animated text was back and operational, and you could just now run an off-the-shelf build of the engine. But now that was done, the time finally came to walk through the valley of death developers, and developers, enter developers, the Windows domain. Oh. Yeah, this is such a waste of time. Look how red it is. I'm just sweating. I don't want Windows 11. Why? Why? Don't build from scratch. Please don't build from scratch. It began with an update. Uh, uh, yeah, configure those updates. Oh well, it's good to make sure your computer's up to date. I've literally just got a blue screen. All you can hear is a fan spinning aggressively. For those wondering, this is currently the state of the Windows laptop. There is no state to it, like it's literally booting and just sweating. Still don't really understand why people make fun of me for using a MacBook. They just work better. Control Alt Delete doesn't work, so essentially I'm screwed. I think I'm just gonna have to hard turn it off. Hey, at least the BIOS still works. Oh. Oh. See, I have a feeling that the Windows 11 install prompt thing was probably what broke it before. I don't want Windows 11. So with the Windows laptop now up and running, I began trying to fix a number of the problems that were present in the Windows build. For instance, this, which was actually just a hard-coded absolute path to MS build. 
The thing is, CMake can actually build stuff for you if you ask it nicely enough. So I just converted all my scripts to that and in doing so made them properly portable. And I also switched my SDL2 build to be built from scratch rather than just using their pre-built binary. But it was around this time, something that had been causing me lots of trouble all along began to resurface. Why do you take so long? What are you doing? Why are you only taking like, what is this? Why are you building it so slowly? Why are you so gross? I hate you. Yes, MS build takes a long time. It was a pretty time consuming job any time I needed to completely rebuild the engine. And as you're developing build system scripts, that tends to happen quite a lot. I'm happy to say that by the end, I managed to get it to work. But now I had the engine compiled and able to run some of my sample projects, it was time to try running the game. Well, it almost worked. The problem it turned out was the place discovered pop-up managed to break something. So rather than trying to fix it, I simply disabled it. And then... <gasps> oh my god, it worked. I was elated. Oh my god, the bullet point doesn't work on Windows. Oh no. Finally, I had the game properly running on Windows. Mostly. So all in all, quite a productive day. I wonder what will happen the next morning. Looks like my computer updated overnight. It's funny that I can't just tell it to go away. It has to be remind me in three days. That was weird. I set up another computer while waiting for a build to finish. I used the caveman method of getting the game onto the device. Just copying it over with a USB drive. And just to set the stage, this was an untouched Windows 10 OS running an executable that was built on a different computer. I was genuinely so pleased about that as that was probably the first portable build of the engine I have ever produced. It took a number of years of planning and preparation to get to this sort of position and it's just really nice to see it all coming together. The final piece of the puzzle was so that I never had to do the caveman approach ever again, get proper CICD pipelines in place so that builds can be automated and downloaded from anywhere. Except that's a really big job. Continuous integration and continuous deployment essentially means that when you push a change, a bunch of checks or builds of the project are made to allow automation of what the developers would have had to do before. So in an ideal world, I'd be able to push a change to my game and then the CI CD pipeline would go through, build it, test it and deploy it in a way that it's very easy for someone randomly just to arrive and download. I do plan to make a few games with this engine, so actually doing this work up front means that I can share it between all the other projects as well, which will, in theory, save me time later on. There's quite a few things to do in order to get this set up, but the journey began with a change of location. The unthinkable has happened. Just when the Valley of Death seemed like it couldn't get any deeper, I moved my project back to GitHub. Then I just had to learn about GitHub Actions. Basically, you can tell it what to do in the action file, and in my case, I just call my build scripts, which had already been made. The idea being that the dependencies themselves don't really change very often, so it's better to have them in this sort of pre-built state. So what I needed to do first was set up an action which would build the dependencies. So then when I come to actually build the engine, I would just clone the dependencies and build it from there. I got a good amount of the way into the build, but obviously problems arose. I managed to get the engine building the Windows and Linux dependencies and archiving them nicely, ready to be downloaded later on. And also it took roughly 15 minutes for each job to report that it had failed. So it was quite time consuming. But that's where it was left off. My plan once I've done with this video is get the engine building on GitHub and in theory, then I can just flag one of the builds as the first alpha. I'll just quickly talk you through a few of the other things I added. One was this developer profile system. Essentially what this was doing is automating one of the things I had before where I would often just bodge into the code some sort of developer workaround like skipping the main menu to just go straight into the game. The problem was that what I'd often end up doing is actually committing that developer workaround and of course that isn't good if you're going to be releasing builds of the game. So what I instead did was this profile system where you can define which profile you want to use in like a separate file that you can just add to your git ignore and the game will just read that in and then it will be aware of which profiles to use so you don't have to deal with any of that stuff manually which is great. And I also found a way to embed the git hash for the engine into the build. I'll also be doing this with the game itself because they are two separate code bases. Hopefully that will allow me to debug things way better. There is still tons to do though. It's things like I need better error logging, uh, better testing, I need to test with release builds I think. 
like probably a million other things. I think I need to be far more descriptive of some of the things like errors in the failure uh, in the save system. Uh, I need to improve the mobile support. I need to improve controller support. Some of these things probably won't get done for the alpha, but most of it should. Really, what I need to focus on at the moment is stabilization. A lot of these things will still pass into other projects I develop with this engine, uh, but it, it has to be stable for now, right? So with all that said, I've got lots to do, so I'll see you next week. Stash Chan, what a weeb. Did your mom get back from her business trip? Business trip.